Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to install Ubuntu Desktop on our uh, server. So that's going to just be an apt install command. So it's going to be apt, and make sure you do this as root. And you'll see I'm in root as I'm doing this. apt install Ubuntu dash desktop. Now, this is a bunch that it's going to install, and you just saw it all roll by. I haven't confirmed yet. It's finally asking me, and you can't see it because it's fallen off the bottom of the screen. Uh, do you want to do this? And the default is yes. I'm just going to hit Y, enter to do it, and that's going to start this process. Now, this is going to take a few minutes. So, it's going to install an entire GUI desktop onto this system. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you don't have to, you know, just sit here and watch numbers roll by. I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to unpause it when this install is finished. And then uh, we'll continue talking about our desktop configuration. Okay, so we finished our install. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here. Now, at this point... Um, the Ubuntu desktop should be loaded. So if we reboot the machine, it should come up with it. We should also be able to launch it using Start X. And I'm going to scale this back down a little bit because we're looking at a desktop screen. So welcome, and here's our initial setup, and we're good with all of that. And we're going to skip that. And all right, let's start using Ubuntu. All right, so here is our Ubuntu desktop. Everything is up and running. Now, I should, should be able to go to activities. We're running the Ubuntu desktop is running GNOME 3. So I should be able to come here and find my applications, including my terminals and virtualization machine manager. Now, before we dive into that, this thing's still running a server, and I went ahead and installed the entire desktop, including LibreOffice and everything. We just installed the whole thing in case we would ever need it, but um, I still want it to boot primarily to my um, to my de or to my command prompt, and then I'll be able to get to it by typing by running start x, and then I'll also be able to get out of it by coming to my user and logging out as my user and that should take me back to here my standard desktop I'm go ahead and exit out of root here and start x will bring me back up to my um desktop system and of course that it is a different user so i have to skip through all of this again okay now, I want this to actually boot to the command prompt, and I don't want it to bring up X Windows unless I absolutely need it. So, I'm going to go ahead and log out. This will take me back to my command prompt, and then I'm going to change my zoom level here again to make it just a little bit easier to follow along. And clear the screen. All right, so for this, I want to edit the etc default grub file. So it's going to be sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash grub and this is my grub configuration file grub is the linux bootloader so um couple of things i want to do here i want to start by going to my grub command line linux default and i want to change this to text and get rid of all of that and text. And then I want to uncomment this line down here that says grub terminal equals console. All right, control O to write it out and then enter con to confirm and control X to exit. And then clear the screen so we can get back up here and see what we're doing. Now to change that, I need to update grub. So it's sudo update dash grub. And that should update my grub bootloader. Now, well, uh, then I need to change my uh, system CTL, my system control, to use a multi-user as a default, multi-user login. So it's sudo systemctl set-default space multi-user.target. Okay. 
and that should change my symbolic link and you'll see it in this line here okay so at this point let me go ahead and bring up startx again bring up my linux desktop or ubuntu desktop view back to yeah we're gonna have to go to a hundred percent to get uh everything visible on the screen so at this point i have my um my desktop environment so i can go to activities and i'm going to search for virtualization manager and here's my virtual machine manager and hit enter and up comes my virtual machine manager and my libvirt d daemon is not running so let's close that and i'm going to this time i'm just going to open up a terminal so i'm going to find just do a search here for terminal and here's my basic terminal. This is a little more advanced terminal. But we'll go with the basic one because it more closely ma mirrors what we've been doing. And I'm going to do system ctl status libvirt d. And that's going to tell us that it is actually active and running. It's also going to tell us that it wants to update some software. Okay. So at this point, we should be able to uh, activate. Let me go ahead and exit out of there. No, I don't want to install now. Go away. Um, at this point, we should be able to activate our virtual machine manager. Unfortunately, it's saying that it can't find the libvirt d daemon. So. I'm going to pause this while I take a look and see if I can track this down, and then we'll pick it back up again. Okay, that was easy enough. All I did is I rebooted the system, and it came up, and my virtual machine manager is now active, and we can see it right here. Okay, now at this point, this video has gone long enough, so we're going to stop it right here, and then we're going to come back in our next video. We're going to talk about managing VMs and creating VMs using the virtual machine manager.